Okay, guys, let's talk about directional control valves. Uh, we have D03 and D05, uh, maximum oper operating pressure, uh, 4,567 PSI, uh, pressure to tank is 2,300. Uh, the D03 it has a GPM, a maximum GPM of 21 GPM, and the D05 has a maximum GPM of 32 GPM. So if you click on this uh, download PDF, uh, you click on it and you can see the data sheet. Uh, the data sheet of this unit uh, basically gives you the pressure rating uh, and it gives you information on how to build the part number. Uh, to build the part number is uh, basically a three or four service port. Uh, that is a pressure tank uh, and either if you want an A and B or just an A port, uh, in case uh, your system, your hydraulic system, uh, only needs a one pressure port, then you, you put that in there. Uh, if it's a regular uh, two direction uh, cylinder or, or motor, uh, you would need an A and B port, and then that would be a four. And so then uh, you have the size, either six or ten. Uh, then you have the spool options, uh, which is all of this things over here. Uh, you have spools for three position or two position. Uh, so you get to pick uh, whatever combination that you need according to the uh, hydraulic schematic, according to the circuit that you're working with, uh, or according to the design that you're designing. Uh, you have uh, then the series. Uh, this is uh, a standard for a uh, geo or NG6, I call it DO3, it's the same thing, it's a 6X, and uh, NG10 or DO5, it has a X3 or a X4, uh, depending on what type of uh, solenoid connection do you want it on the coil. If you have wanted a dense solenoid, which is the standard, uh, you have a 3X, and if you want just an open uh, wire, uh, then you have a 4X. Uh, then on the energize, uh, either if you want a D10 or a, a spring return, uh, the spring return will automatically will put the, the valve back in the normal position. Uh, like over here, for example, this is the normal position uh, with a closed center. Uh, you energize it, uh, it'll go one direction, or you energize it, it'll go in the other direction. Uh, but then when you de-energize it, uh, the uh, spring return will automatically return the valve to normal position. Uh, if you have a two-position valve over here, you can have a spring return, or you can have a detent. A D10 will maintain the position on the valve. So you energize it and the valve goes to shift to pressure to A. And it will stay to A. And you can de-energize the solenoid and the valve will stay in the same position in the same position until you energize the other solenoid for the other position. And then it would uh, give you the next position that, that you have, you know. So uh, are, those are the type of... Uh, a spring return or D10 uh, for the valve, the energized condition. Uh, over here, uh, we also have uh, the different uh, electrical uh, options. Uh, we have a 12 volts DC, 24 uh, volts DC. Uh, then we have a 120 and one, 110 and 220 and 240. Uh, this is uh, AC. Um, uh, those are the most popular connections. We also have a 96 and 196 DC uh, also available. Uh, then uh, you have the solenoid override option. Uh, you can either have it or not have it or have it cover or uncover. Uh, those are the options that we offer. Uh, a lot of people will, will pick the N9, which is basically a manual override available. Uh, which is a, a button that you press and, and the solenoid will, will shift. And uh, people usually will want that and will want it covered so that nobody messes with it. Uh, but if you know it's there, you just uncover it and you push it and you use it. Uh, in this uh, over here, the next one is the electrical connection types. Uh, basically, is the DEN connector is the most popular one. Uh, we have uh, wire housing also available. This is just the loose wire. And for the DEN connectors, uh, we have options uh, if you want it with a light, if you want a little bigger DEN connector, uh, a little bigger 
um, yeah, a little bigger unit, a little bigger uh, than connector, you have it available. Uh, then if you want a rectifier uh, on it, uh, let's say you have a, an al alternative current, but your solenoid is a DC, so you put a, a rectifier and you make it so it's a DC uh, connection. And you have also a surge suppressor, suppression as well. So in case of a, any electrical failure and you want to protect the solenoid and so on. Um, over here, port restrictions. Normally, uh, a lot of people we want it with no code. And uh, we have a lot of, of them with no code. But for whatever reason, in the circuit, if you want a restriction uh, on the flow going through the valve, then we do have different alternatives uh, that we you can use and you can put in there. Uh, normally, a lot of people don't use it, but if needed, we have them as well. Uh, the solenoid, uh, Buna seals or Viton seals available. And then uh, at the very last is the position uh, of the um, of the mount. Is it, this is uh, on the mounting of, of the DO3, DO5 mounting. Uh, it has locating holes or locating pins uh, that basically tells you hey, this is the right way to do it. This is the right way to mount it and it fits and it's in the right position. And um, you don't need them. You don't need them, uh, but a lot of valves have them. And, uh, and so uh, we have it available as well. So that's the overview on how to build the part number of these valves. Uh, DO3, DO5, 21 GPM, 32 GPM, uh, very, very standard valves. Uh, a lot of people have this option and we can cross a lot of other manufacturers. We can cross a lot of other manufacturers because because they're standard. <laughs> the mounting, the DO3, DO5 is a standard. So a lot of manufacturers have the same standard on the mounting. And if you have uh, the same mounting, all you need to find out is the configuration, the, the electrical connection, and so on. And the valve will fit in the same spot. So uh, that is pretty much the overview. Uh, over here, we do have some parts. Uh, then coils, part numbers that we have for for sale as a replacement part. Uh, most of the parts that you're going to replace ever on these valves are going to be you either replace the entire valve because it doesn't work anymore or you replace the the solenoid. You know, most people just replace the solenoid. Most people, uh, well, I wouldn't say most people. I say uh, they replace the valves and the solenoids. Um, however, though, I got to say, if you maintain your hydraulic system uh, with good filtration, free of water, free of uh, um, solids, free of um, uh, in, in good working temperature, uh, not overheating, uh, and you treat your oil in, in, and maintain it in good condition, this valve should also last you a very, very, very long time. There's no need to be changing it. So if you're changing solenoids too often on these stands, I, I will look at the. Uh, I will. I will look into filtrating the oil uh, to a good ISO uh, level, contamination level, and uh, you should have a, a better life, not just of the valves, but of your entire uh, hydraulic system. So that is the overview of uh, these directional control valves. Uh, any questions? Just shoot us an email. An, an email, email below over here and website below over here as well. So we'll see you next time. Bye bye.